Thanks to Brilliant.org for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey yo, it's Diana, and you're watching Physics Girl. Let's just get right to it. Yeah. Is there like a note like ooh or ah? Uh, like... I, I, I think uh, <laughs> uh, E. E. E is okay. the best note. Okay. So try not to touch your lips on the glass, just okay. in case it does go. Yep, that's it. Okay. I should have mentioned it was going to be really annoying. I was in New York City at the YouTube space in December with fellow YouTuber Mike Boyd, who shared a video with me that he'd made about something that I've wanted to do for years. You beat me to it, Mike Boyd! He probably didn't know I had dibs on the topic, you know. But the topic that I had in mind was to figure out whether a non-professional singer can break a wine glass with just their voice. Because I'd seen this done before, breaking a wine glass with sound at MIT, where they broke a wine glass with audio speakers, and then the Mythbusters did it with a professional singer. But the raw, untrained human voice? Well, Mike brought some good news with him too, which is that he was able to do it. And I'll put a link to his learning video in the description. But he brought a wine glass to the space for me to try. You're really looking to feel the vibration yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, down here. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then just reduce the sweeps until you're like, feel like you're right on it. Yeah, we got it, we got it. It's exhausting. We got it. Mike was telling me to try these sweeping noises up to the right pitch. Right, attempt three. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think this is one of the few cases in life where it's easier to learn a trick if you understand the physics. Also, I learned some major tips along the way, including the obvious ones like wear safety goggles and don't try this at home. The reason this is so challenging is that the note that you have to hold has to be the glass's exact resonant frequency. We'll get to resonant frequency, but first we need to think of the glass not as something that you drink out of, but as an oscillating system. An oscillating system is a system that goes back and forth, like a playground swing. I know that back and forth is a vague definition, but there are too many different types of oscillating systems to get more specific than that. Electrically and magnetically oscillating systems, economically oscillating systems, like an economy that goes up and down, yeah. But mechanically, these are all oscillating systems. So when you flick a wine glass, it vibrates back and forth, pushing the air, and that's what makes the ringing note that you hear. Now back to the playground swing. The swing is a totally overused analogy for explaining resonance, but it's just so good. It's an oscillating system and it has a resonant frequency. You can describe resonant frequency two ways. One is that it's the frequency your swing will keep swinging at if you just let it go. In the wine glass, that frequency is the note it vibrates at if you flick it and let it ring. By the way, musical notes can always be described by their frequency or frequencies. Now, another way of describing resonant frequency is that if you drive your oscillating system at that frequency, it will have the maximum response in amplitude, meaning it'll have the maximum response in distance between the back and forth. So if you push the swing at just the right moment, or in other words, you match its resonant frequency, the amplitude will increase. I know you've done this and it'll increase more than if you pushed it at any other frequency. Now the wine glass and Analog is that if you sing at the glass at its resonant frequency, your vocal cords are vibrating the air molecules that vibrate the glass and drive it at its resonant frequency. And then just like the swing will go higher and higher, the glass will vibrate or shake harder and harder. And if you shake something hard enough, it will eventually break. So that's why this is so tricky. You have to sing at the exact right frequency and hold it really loudly. I can't break this particular glass no matter how hard I try because I can't hold that note loud enough. So it helps to know physics and also to be able to match the right pitch. I should probably disclose that I did some musical theater and acapella in my day, but hey, it helped with this. Goal accomplished, except the story is not finished. There was a slight difference between the glass that I broke and the one that Mike broke in his video. Mine had a tiny scratch in the top to make it easier to break. When MIT did this demo for our lecture, they told us you could do the same thing. You put a tiny little scratch in the top to give the crack some place to start. But when Mike broke his glass, he used a new, perfect, unblemished glass. And I wanted to see if I'd be capable of doing that too. So while I was home for the holidays. Can I try to break your wine glasses with my voice? Ready? That was loud. I'm afraid if I have a sip of my drink, my glass is gonna 
Also, you gonna break the other one? Break that one. I'm gonna pass out. You know what? What? We no. could do. You could be going. <laughs> And I'll shoot a pelican in it. Yeah, he be good. <laughs> Easy. You won't notice when the glass goes shooting that way. <laughs> you break it. Okay. So Diana, yes. I'm trying to print a PDF <laughs> file, and every time I go to print it, it puts it small on the page. Is there any way to increase that? Wow. You hear that? Oh, I thought you were gonna get it. I thought, I thought you were yeah. gonna get it. I thought I had it too. <laughs> I was like zooming in for dramatic effects right then, you know? <laughs> I was trying to do it with whatever wine glasses my mom had, which were made of glass. But what you really want is a glass that when you flick it, it rings, which physically means that it's not damped, which is kind of like if you greased the top of your swing so that it doesn't slow down. And then you also want one with a thin rim, which means it'll deform more. The glasses that meet these requirements are typically made out of crystal, which is totally misleading because they're not actually crystalline in the way that chemists think of crystals, as in they don't have a nice repeating molecular structure. They're just glass with some lead or something else in them. I braved the post-holiday shopping for you guys, and I bought a couple crystal glasses, so. <gasps> These say crystal, they have a good ring. <coughs> so promising and so painful. I compared my experience later with Mike about having to sing forever at these glasses, and he had found the same thing. For new glasses with no little scratch, you have to just sing at the glass for a really, really long time. This is interesting. Why? Why would you need to keep singing at it? Is it weakening the glass over time? Well, I asked my engineering friend, Kyle. The interesting question actually is why the glass breaks at all when you sing at it. Theoretically, the glass should actually be this incredibly strong material like you should be able to take your wine glass and like bounce it off the floor and catch it like that's how strong it should be but when we do experiments measuring the strength of glass what we measure is about a hundred times less than the actual strength of glass what causes that is defects in the glass you know very very small defects that we call cracks and that's what starts the fracture everything starts with these cracks so you're seeing at the wine glass and it's vibrating back and forth like this. And it's gonna put a little bit of tensile stress on this small crack. So it's gonna stretch it. And every time it does that, maybe the crack grows by a little tiny bit, right? And you do that again and again and again, thousands of times until finally the crack gets to a critical crack length and then boom, you get brittle fracture, catastrophic failure, glass is done. So that's one possible explanation. Another idea is actually that it takes you maybe a long time, 10 minutes, to actually get the perfect pitch. So you have to be able to hit this resonant frequency for long enough, and when you get that pitch, the resonance is so great that the tensile stress exceeds the critical tensile stress, even for a small crack, and it just, it could be that you're not accurate enough, exactly. I mean, it's, you sound beautiful, but I don't know. I can't tell, like a beautiful dying bird. <laughs> So no matter what, you need some blemish. You need some kind of crack in the glass. But putting a little one at the top makes it so you don't have to go through that process of weakening and lengthening the crack in the glass over time. All right, engineering mystery solved. That's all for me. Thank you so much for watching and happy physicsing. Last thing, I'd like to thank Brilliant.org for supporting PBS Digital Studios. One thing that I miss about taking physics classes is actively doing problems. Brilliant.org is a unique learning site in that it is problems first.
which is a good thing in this case. You can try out practice problems about things that you might already be interested in, like could you build a sphere around the sun to harness all of its solar energy? Well, you can do the calculation for that and be guided by Brilliant.org to understand the concepts behind this type of problem. In summary, Brilliant.org is a problem-solving website that might be able to help you think like a physicist. To check out Brilliant.org, you can head over to Brilliant.org slash physics girl. Using that link lets them know I sent you. I'll put the link in the description and the first 200 people to click on it will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you.